All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of In the Kitchen with Shawnee. Today, we're going to be making spud nuts. Um, I wanted to make these for a while, and of course, um, normally I'm crazy busy and never have time to do this. I haven't made them since I was young, uh, probably living at home. So anyway, I just thought, let's take advantage of the time and do some things for fun too, not just for survival. So here we are making spud nuts in the kitchen today. Now, joining me today is my lovely sous chef, not the potato, <laughs> Jaden. <laughs> Many of you don't know this maybe, but uh, part of his schooling in his senior year was learning how to cook and bake with me in the kitchen. And so today he decided that he would help me to make spud nuts. So we're going to be working together on this. Now, the first thing I want to say is living in Pocatello, we are super blessed and always have been starting with the hot spot clean back when I was a little girl to have a place that makes spud nuts. And we, then we had a bit of a hiatus when the hot spot closed until we had the donut. And now we have amazing glaze. So all of these businesses are great donut shops. I totally um, give my big thumbs up and I want you guys to support them, but maybe you're like me right now <laughs> and you're not venturing out more than is necessary. So that's what brings us to bring making spud nuts today. So anyway, all that to say, let's get started. Okay, so what we have here are two potatoes that are peeled <laughs> and washed and peeled. They weigh approximately or very, very close to a pound together. Jaden's gonna quarter them for us and he's gonna try to do it without looking like a serial mass murderer. He's gonna quarter them for us and stick them in our pot there. Go ahead and stick them in the pot, buddy. And then he'll do the other. And we're gonna go ahead and get these cooking. Um, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and get these uh, cooking on over medium heat for probably about 20 minutes, um, maybe a little less. It just all depends on how quickly they decide to cook. But um, what we're gonna do to cover them with water is you wanna cover them completely so that they're not exposed to Let's air. Put pan first. Oh, here they are corded. And so they're not exposed to any air while they're cooking. So we're just gonna turn on my cold water here and get it going in this pan. And when you cook these, letting them boil till they're soft and tender, like I said, probably about 20 minutes, but we'll mark the time. Um, you're gonna reserve some of the water. So don't just right away drain them. Okay, we're gonna reserve some of the water for actually making the the donuts. So how much water did you put in? Oh, I they're quite covered. I mean, they're very well covered, a good inch above the potato line. I would guess it to be probably around six cups. Whoops, wrong one. The, um, I'm not the best at that. So there they are on medium heat. We're gonna go ahead and let those cook. And when we're done, when they're close to done, I'll come back and tell you how much time has expired. In the meantime, we'll get the rest of our ingredients together. Okay, we are back. Our potatoes are cooked. I wanted to show you here. Um, with, you know they're done. It's been a, probably about 20 minutes, maybe 25. But you know they're done when you can see that my fork just easily stabs into them. Okay, so that's what you're looking for. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to take out a half cup of this potato liquid that we just cooked our our potatoes in and we're just going to put it in a bowl to the side here and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to drain let's just set this here drain our potatoes and and mash them let me get out my lid here Now we don't want to use any, oftentimes when we make mashed potatoes to have with dinner or for Thanksgiving or something like that, we often put in butter and milk. But today we're not doing that. 
we want to just mash them just with the just with the potato so let me grab my masher here sorry try and we're just gonna mash these up into as fine as we possibly can we obviously don't want any um any uh lumps or chunks so while i'm doing that i'm gonna go ahead and just put you guys on pause you don't have to sit here and watch for me mash these and we'll come back for the next steps in just a second okay we are back i got my potatoes all mashed nice and smooth so our next step is that half cup of uh potato oh you want to show them? yeah see they're nice and smooth no lumpy lumps or at least very small lumpy lumps um, so the next thing we're going to do is with our half cup of reserved uh, potato water, we're going to dissolve our yeast. Now this is, that was a tablespoon, a tablespoon of active dry yeast. And we're just going to dissolve that in here, in this potato water. We're not going to, in some recipes I've shown you, we've actually activated the yeast. We're not going to do that this time. We're just going to make sure it gets all dissolved. Sorry, I don't mean to be blocking the bowl with my hand there, right? This just feels a little precarious, but I think it's a lot more solid than it feels. Oh, right. And to me, that looks pretty good. You can feel, you'll, you're really, um, cause it's, it's not going to become like perfectly incorporated where there's not chunks of yeast, but what you're kind of feeling for is, um, the yeast to feel gummy. Um, you'll, you'll feel it in the bowl. It feels gummy and softened and, and that's what it means to dissolve it. And you can kind of already see now I've always told you that yeast needs sugar to eat. Well, it's going to get some real sugar here in a minute, but what you need to remember is if you've ever done a low carb diet, this is going to come as no surprise to you. Potatoes have starch in them, which is a, a form of sugar. So they kind of have their own sugar too. Okay, so to my KitchenAid here, we're gonna add that dissolved yeast. Let me make sure I scrape the bowl and get all our lovely little yeasties. Ooh, and I can smell. I love the smell of activated yeast, it's so good. Okay. And to that, we're gonna add our potatoes, our mashed potatoes. Add them all in there, all at once. They're nice and hot, so, okay. Very good. And one and a half cups of milk. Now this milk has been warmed, um, just like you drink it at night if you were gonna drink a warm milk. Not searing hot, but just warmed. And I just warmed it in the microwave. I think it took two minutes. And this is a less than a thousand watt microwave. Two teaspoons of salt. A half cup of white sugar. And I'm gonna actually get that going before I add the eggs. I didn't say to do that, but I don't wanna scramble my eggs in hot liquid. So let's get this going. Gonna get it stirring up here. Okay. Oh, I can't forget to. A half cup of vegetable oil. Finally, two eggs. All right. Let's get that up a bit just to break those egg yolks. There we go. I saw them break now. Perfect, perfect. Okay, drop this back down. And what we're gonna do is add some flour now. This is um, four cups of five. 
Oh, excuse me, five cups. Oh, four cups, you're right, four. Oh, okay, I thought I was right. I think this is four. <laughs> Doesn't matter, we're probably gonna end up adding more, but I, I do believe it's four. I'm actually gonna grab a spoon to make this a little easier. This bowl is pretty big. So we're just gonna add in our flour here until it starts making a nice, soft dough. Now we want this to be, this is one thing we're not going to, we're not going to need this dough, okay? Um, we don't really want to build up a whole lot of gluten because we don't want our donuts to be chewy and tough. We want them to be soft and light. One of the reasons I love spud nuts is just by nature, the potato flour gives them that, that uh, wonderful, light, fluffy consistency. So, and one thing I want to mention to you guys too, this is, um, this is going to make a lot of donuts. Like, uh, the recipe says it's going to make two dozen. I'm, go they're assuming, uh, four dozen. <laughs> they're assuming that, um, I'm using a round donut cutter. I'm actually going to cut these into what I call tiger tails or lawn johns. They're maple bars, whatever you want to call them. Maybe I'll do some rounds, but I'm mostly going to do bars. But so this makes four dozen. Now, I'm not eating four dozen donuts uh, for lots of reasons. But what I am going to do, and some of you may end up being the recipients of these, is I am going to give them away. <laughs> so we are going into town later this afternoon. I'm going to be putting a post on Facebook and the first people who respond to that post get my donuts delivered to their doorstep. lot of flour for my KitchenAid so she's gonna make a mess it's okay we can handle it yeah I don't really want to slow her down okay so what we're looking for right now guys is just this to form a nice soft dough um, it may be a little sticky that's okay uh, but we just want that four cups of flour completely incorporated and So that's what we're basically watching for here at the bottom of my bowl. And once that happens, like I said, we're not going to need this a whole lot. So we're going to be putting it into a greased glass bowl, sticking it in there, turning it like we have before to cover the, the dough with a layer of short meat. So the, uh, saran wrap doesn't stick to it and then um, letting it rise to double um, there's no really set time for this we're gonna I am gonna get out my heating pad with covered with a towel do that trick just to kind of speed up this process a bit because it's really cold today and um, you know like I've said before our house is kind of cold on cold days so need more flowers or I it's all right. I'm I'm going to stop it here and feel it. Yeah, it's sticky, but not overly so. So to me, that's right. Sorry, boy. Now, I mean, it's been, like I said, it's been years since I made this dough. So maybe I'll have an addendum at the end of some tips that I think might be helpful for next time. So do watch to the end before you start. Watch this video one time through at least before you start trying to make it. But yeah, to me, Bri, this looks right. It's got a nice 
softness to the dough. Um, you know, crushes easily. It's sticky, but not so sticky as to be, you know, causing a huge mess on my hands. Um, it does feel like there's a little bit of a dryness at the bottom here, so I'm just going to not really knead it, but make sure that I get that kind of mixed in there so that felt like dry flour and it does not feel like that anymore. So, okay, so this is what you're looking for. Soft dough, you can feel it's so warm. That's a lot of dough. Yeah, I totally believe this is gonna make several dozen donuts. Um, so what we're gonna do is just put it in our bowl, twist and twist to coat it, flip it over. Okay, and then let me sneak in here if I get up and watch out the dog is there. Our dog, Bullet, this is the coolest part of the room and he's a Aussie and he, he likes it cold. Me and I both do. So he's constantly on this floor laying down. Okay, so we're just gonna cover this. Remember, we want this to rise to double. So that's going to be quite a bit. Um, it's going to grow quite a bit. So I'm going to actually put saran wrap on the bowl two different directions. So that as this rises and starts billowing up, the short end of the saran wrap does not allow air onto our dough. Remember, air on any sort of dough that's trying to rise forms a crust. And you guys know... Um, crust is hard, it won't allow the dough to expand. So you do not want to expose your, your dough to air. You also don't want to get that saran wrap so tight that it doesn't have enough room to, to poof up. Okay, so um, I'm going to set up my little heating pad with the um, towel on it, put this dough on there, and let it rise to double. I'll mark the time and let you know when we come back how long it is. We're back and I just wanna show you, our dough has doubled in size, if you wanna take a look at it here. I forgot to tell you, of course, to, to uh, cover it with a towel also. So all we're gonna do right now, look at that dough. Doesn't that just look so beautiful? I don't know, there's something about seeing dough like this and knowing that I made it. It just makes me feel like a pioneer woman. Okay, so we're going to just gently remove that plastic wrap. And um, you can see she just grew like crazy. We're going to punch this down with our wee little fist here. Okay, just like that. Okay, and all we're gonna do is cover this again and let it rise to double one more time. So again, we just put our plastic wrap on nice and loosely so she has plenty of room to grow. Just like that. Oh, and I should tell you, it was 45 minutes this first time. So again, I'll set a timer. It, you didn't, we didn't knock all the air out, as you can see. So it will take less time the second time around. So I'll probably set my timer for 20 minutes this time and see where we're at after that. Okay, we're back. And while our dough is doing its second rise after we punched it down, we're gonna go ahead and make the glaze. So for the two donuts today, like I told you, I'm going to be making tiger tails. Um, tiger tails are the maple with the chocolate stripes or their chocolate with maple stripes. So they look like tiger tails. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to make the chocolate glaze. So right here in this uh, sifter, we have a cup and a half of just powdered sugar. Jaden, would you please add these four tablespoons? of cocoa powder. Very good. And then go ahead and sift those together, bud. Nice and even and gentle. You're doing a great job. Okay. 
Mmm, you can smell the chocolate. It smells so good. Now this should be enough glaze to do our whole batch of uh, donuts. I'm thinking, I, I really have no way of knowing that, but I'm thinking it will be enough. But if it's not, we can always make more. No big deal. Um, okay, bud, let's see how we're doing there. Yeah, let's go ahead and give it a little pound on its side there. Kind of, because sometimes once those, uh, bought the sugar clumps at the bottom need a little hard shape. To this, um, in a minute, we're going to start with um, a tablespoon. I have a little handy dandy milk measure here um, that holds eight tablespoons of milk. We're going to start with a tablespoon at a time as, as Jaden whisks. To see if that's right, um, to the right consistency. Now I like that. Yep, that looks great, bud. That's perfect. Um, I like my uh, glaze a little thicker. I don't like it super thin when it comes to donuts. So, Jaden, I'm going to start by just putting in a tablespoon of milk, and then if you'll kind of whisk that up. Yep, there you go. And we'll add a little bit more if we need to. This is super simple. Daddy in on your side there, babe. Looks like we need a titch more. We'll do another tablespoon. There we go. Alexa, stop. How's that looking? It needs more. Needs more? Yes. Okay. Pour in some more milk, Jay. Just a tablespoon at a time, bud, so just a bit. Okay. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. I'm going to do just a little bit more. There you go. That should be enough. Now, if for some reason that ends up being too much, we can always recover by sifting in a little bit more powdered sugar. That's not too thick. Let me take a look. I'm sadly, I'm such a, I have to feel it <laughs> to know that. <laughs> it's a little thick. It's a little thick, yep. We're gonna just do a titch more. Now, I will say this goes from too thick to too thin pretty easily. So you really want to just do a teaspoon to a tablespoon of milk at a time to get the, the right consistency. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say that's just a titch too thick still. Titch more. Okay, that looks about right to me. What you're looking for, we'll double check here in a second, but what you're looking for is your, it to just come off really nice and easy, but not look watery. I don't know if you can tell by that. It's when you stir it, it leaves nice um, trails, uh, but when you pick it up, look at how easy it comes off that that uh thing so whatever that is <laughs> what is that called brian the whisk a whisk that's right good job okay hey, now we're gonna go ahead and make our maple glaze and um what i have here is a a bowl with two cups of powdered sugar in i our family does tend to love maple glaze donuts a little bit more than chocolate so you'll notice with the chocolate i used um a cup and a half this is a this is two cups because I have a sneaky suspicion we'll use a little more maple than we will chocolate. But to that, to make the maple flavor, this is how I make it. I love Maplelene. Um, it's an artificial maple flavor that you can buy at any grocery store. If you had real maple syrup and you were really a good person, you could use real maple syrup. But here's my true confession. <laughs> I don't like the taste of it as much as I do the imitation <laughs> maple lean. So we're going to use maple lean. Maybe it's maple lean. <laughs> There's a, that's a good one. Okay. 
So what we're going to do, because we like, <laughs> Jaden loves my joke. Um, we're, we like ours to be a nice maple flavor. We're going to start with a teaspoon. So to our two cups of powdered sugar, we're adding a teaspoon of maple And we're going to go ahead and add, let's see here. We're going to go ahead and, oh, can you wait just a second, bud? I'm going to add a little bit of um, milk. milk. Okay, there we go. Start there. Give that a good whisk. Okay, we're going to add a little bit more. Whisking that up. Does it need more too, bud? It yeah. looks like it. Okay, there you go. Again, if we happen to accidentally go too thin, um, we can just add more powdered sugar. It's not the end of the world. How's that feeling, bud? Cement. Cement. Let's add a bit more then. Okay. There we go. That's sounding like we're getting somewhere. Are you talking about <clears throat> behind nope. my back? Nope. Or, How do we get that out of that whisk? It's all stuck in the inside of that whisk. You don't it know. just needs to be... It's part of your donut now. <laughs> okay. Can you it just it? needs to be manhandled. Fiber. It's probably... I've done it. A little, a little thick. We'll add a little bit more. And then this time, Jay just really kind of um, whack. Not, not hard to where you split it all over the <laughs> but kind of give the the whisk a nice tap against the brush. Infuse with Do you real need steel. Your mom to take over. No. <laughs> uh, it might actually need a little more milk. Well, maybe not. Okay. I got it. No worries. There it is. Okay, perfect. That's looking really good, bud. Yeah, yep. very nice. Okay, excellent. And so what we're going to do with these two glazes while they wait is we are going to um, cover them with saran wrap so they uh, don't get a crust on them or anything. We're back and we made a big mistake. We ate lunch. <laughs> We took a little lunch break and my, I came back out to my dough and I was like, holy cannoli. So it is totally ready. I'm going to punch it down. There we go. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do, by the way, my, my heating pad is off. I saw when it started to explode that I needed to turn that off. I'm looking for my pizza cutter. Okay, got it. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little flour and we're just gonna dust the countertop here so that we can have a nice, clean, floured surface to work with. Okay. And I'm gonna take about half this dough to start with. out of the bowl, place it on my floured surface. I'm gonna just cover the rest of it with this plastic wrap just so it doesn't get exposed to the air and get a crust. And we're gonna take this part and we're just gonna roll it out with our hands. I do have a roller here. I, I think I remember liking to use my hands, but since it has been so long since I've done this, I got out the roller just in case. So you're flouring you the dough a little bit? you can see that I'm flouring the dough a little bit so that it doesn't stick to my hands. Um, again, I submit that rolling it out locks out or knocks down a lot of air. 
And so I prefer to just kind of pat it out. Okay, so we're looking about half inch thick. Does that look about half inch thick to you, Bri? Mm -hmm. it does to me too. And I want to make tiger tails. So I'm going to take this. Now remember, these are going to puff up a little bit when you, when you cook them. So I'm going to take my pizza cutter and I'm going to cut about a two, two inch, um, two inch wide. Thing. And then we're going to go right over here to our, our, um, let me move this dirty dish out of the way here. Prior. And we're going to just, again, we want to let this kind of, like we did with the Italian nachos, we want to let that kind of get some air in it so it doesn't just sink to the bottom. Want the end to kind of puff up a little bit. There we go. And we're gonna just let this cook in this hot oil. We'll start with about four minutes per side and then um, if I need to adjust lower time than that, I'll let you know when we come back. Okay, so we're back. It's actually taking about two minutes, a little less, uh, about 15 seconds less, so a minute and 45 seconds on each side. So I'm just going to show you what you want is though you want a nice deep golden brown on these and then you just roll them over with the tongue like that and you give them the same amount of time on the second side. And so I'll be back in a second to show you that when it's done. Okay, so it's been about a minute and a half to a minute and three quarters on this other side too I want to show you. So you're just looking for that nice beautiful deep golden brown and then we're just gonna take them over here. On the stove here, I have a, a couple of drying racks set up with some paper towels underneath to let them go ahead and cool. And once they're cool-ish, we'll go ahead and glaze them. So I'm gonna leave you for a minute to get some uh, bait uh, cooked and when I've got a nice set that's ready to be glazed, I'll show you how to glaze them and then that will be the end of our video. Okay, we're back and we're ready to glaze our donuts. So the easiest way to do this is to take your bowl of glaze um, and with these donuts, they're cool. They're cool to the touch. When they're cool, they're, they're, they won't uh, break. And you just dip them into the glaze and then stick them on a drying rack. I'm gonna get this other side a little bit better. Like that. Okay. And you just keep doing that with your donuts, getting them nice and in the bowl. Can you kind of show them, babe, on the bowl? There you go. Perfect. Okay. And then to make the tiger tail part, which I'm gonna show you, and then I'll work on glazing these. We're just gonna grab a, a fork or a spoon or something. We're gonna get our chocolate glaze and just go ahead and make the stripes. Just like that on the donut. And there you have beautiful tiger striped donuts. Now. If you prefer to sprinkle them with some sprinkles, you could do that. You could um, just take these and roll them in powdered sugar for powdered donuts, or just make a simple vanilla glaze and dip the warm donuts in that glaze and just have glazed donuts. But this is the maple stripe. So thanks so much for joining me for this. Um, if you have any questions or anything, you can hit me up on Facebook or text me. Other than that, just remember, I love you and God's gonna get us through this. Okay guys, I just have a little addendum on this video. Um, I told you I'd, I'd share any tricks of the trade that I learned as I was making these today. Um, I had made them before, but it has been, like I told you, a long time. So it takes, you know, having to do it to kind of refresh your brain, um, at least for me. 
So here's a few things that I learned, okay? Number one, you're looking, the perfect time for frying them was one minute and 15 seconds aside. So we just set a timer for that amount of time, put them in, flipped them at one minute and 15 seconds, just pulled them out at one, 15, one minute and 15 seconds. Second thing, we tore one of the just plain old, hadn't even been glazed yet, donuts apart and the texture was out of this world. It was crisp on the outside, light and fluffy on the inside. These donuts will knock your socks off. Okay, that's number two. Number three, one of the other ways that you can finish them is um, by just rolling them into cinnamon sugar. So regular granulated sugar mixed with cinnamon to your taste preference, roll those hot donuts one side then the other and you'll have a perfectly cinnamon sweet treat and finally the last little tip i wanted to tell you is because i ended up doing the bars they were a little long for my bowl and so once i left you guys um out there in cyber world I took one of my plates and I don't know um, if you can see this, but it's got a nice dip in it. And I would just fill this with glaze and dip my donut and it was a lot easier. So that's the, that's the final trick. And then I also wanted to just show you what they ended up turning out like. So, um, and then as you know, or don't know, maybe you didn't catch this, but we blessed our friends who the first three to comment on our post about with that tray of donuts. So our winners were Jody Perkins, uh, Becky Ronk, and Ruth Sweeney. Now we decided as a family that um, everyone's getting kind of sad and depressed and oh, it's, it's, it, this is getting to be really trying. So every once in a while, we are going to be bless, blessing you guys with treats that we make, either savory or sweet. So um, be watching for our Facebook posts and jump through whatever hoop we decide to <laughs> make you jump through that day. No, it won't be hard. I'm just kidding. It was usually going to be commenting. And we would love to bless you. And we're probably going to make sure that not the same three people win for a while like we'll reset every month or something i don't know we'll figure it out a way to be fair but anyway we just want you guys to remember how much we love you how much we want to stick with you through this and how much we just want to be there for you guys in tangible ways so anyway god bless you all you're in our thoughts and prayers god's going to get us through this